Today I'll be demonstrating the new 22-inch version of the Wacom Cintiq. I'll show you how it compares to the smaller 16-inch Cintiq, and I'll share my overall opinion of the device. Quick disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video, but Wacom did send me this tablet unconditionally for review purposes. As always, all opinions in this video are my own. I'm Aaron Rutten, and if you're new to this channel, I review the latest digital art tech. Let's start this review off with a quick overview of some of the key features of the Wacom Cintiq 22. Because the Cintiq 22 is nearly identical to the Cintiq 16, which I reviewed in a separate video, I'll only briefly list the specifications and features of this version. Feel free to watch my full review of the Wacom Cintiq 16 to get a more in-depth look at this device and what it can do. I'll link you to that at the end of this review. The Cintiq 16 and the new Cintiq 22 were designed as a solution for artists and designers who want the quality of a Wacom display tablet, but may not require some of the advanced features included with the Cintiq Pro line. The Cintiq 22 is a perfect entry-level display tablet for anyone who wants to work directly on screen. This device works great for drawing, painting, animation, design, video editing, and more. You can draw directly onto the screen or navigate just like you would with a mouse using a pen. The Cintiq 22 comes with the Wacom Pro Pen 2, which has over 8,000 pressure levels and is the best drawing tablet pen you can get. But the Cintiq 22 also supports other types of pens, such as the Wacom Art Pen, which can sense barrel rotation, the Pro Pen Slim, which is a lot thinner, more like a pencil, and other types of Wacom pens. The Pro Pen 2 also supports pen tilt, so you can tilt your pen and shade with the side of your pencil. The Cintiq 22 has a display resolution of 1920 by 1080 HD, with a color gamut that reaches 72% of NTSC. And there is an adjustable stand which attaches securely to the back of the tablet, which is included. So that's an overview of the Cintiq 22, but how does it compare to the smaller Cintiq 16? The most obvious difference between the Cintiq 16 and the Cintiq 22 is the size of the display. The active drawing area and display size of the Cintiq 16 is approximately 16 inches diagonally. And if you guess that the Cintiq 22 has an additional 6 inches of screen space to draw on, you're right! That's the length of a lobster tail! I mean a dollar bill! No, you can't have the dollar. No, you can't have the lobster tail either. Now, as you might expect, there's going to be a difference in weight as well. The Cintiq 16 is a little bit over 4 pounds without the optional stand. The Cintiq 22 is a little bit over 12 pounds without the optional stand. The Cintiq 16 has a 3-in-1 cable that attaches very securely to the back of the tablet. We see the same compartment door on the Cintiq 22, but instead of a 3-in-1 cable, Wacom has chosen to go with three individual cables for HDMI, USB, and power. Personally, I really like the cable design on the Cintiq 16, and I miss seeing it on the Cintiq 22. Although I have heard more than one complaint from viewers regarding the cable for the Cintiq 16 being a proprietary cable that could be hard to find or expensive to replace. You can get replacement HDMI and USB cables anywhere for cheap, so perhaps that's why we see three separate cables here. And perhaps individual cables add more flexibility in terms of cable length because a one-size-fits-all solution doesn't work for everyone. I also think some of the logic behind this decision was that a Cintiq 16 might get moved around your desk a lot, whereas the Cintiq 22 will probably stay put. I think I prefer the more secure connection because honestly the connections are a little bit loose on the Cintiq 22. I would be worried about accidentally yanking those cords and possibly breaking one of the connections or the cables. This is the kind of design that I'd expect to see on a Cintiq imitation, not on a genuine Cintiq. So I'm a little bit disappointed that they didn't go with the cable that comes with the Cintiq 16. Now there is a little compartment door that closes on the cables. It does prevent the cables from getting tugged a little bit, but not quite as much as I would like. My solution has been to use the twist ties that come included with the cables for the Cintiq 22 to twist tie the cables together and make my own 3-in-1 cable. Take that, Wacom. One of the most noticeable differences between the Cintiq 16 and 22 are the legs on the back of the tablet. The Cintiq 16 has two legs on either side that fold out to angle the tablet upward a bit. These legs are nowhere to be found on the Cintiq 22. They are, however, present on the Cintiq Pro 24 and 32. Another key difference is that the adjustable stand is included with the Cintiq 22, whereas it must be purchased separately with the Cintiq 16 at a price of $80. The stands are very similar. The stand for the Cintiq 22 is a little bit larger, and it can be angled a bit higher and lower. I think it was a good idea to include the stand because, in my opinion, it is essential. So keep that in mind if you're trying to decide between the 16-inch and the 22-inch models of the Cintiq. Just like the Cintiq 16, 
the back of the Cintiq 22 has mounting holes for a VESA compatible stand. So you could easily mount this display to an Ergotron arm instead of using the official stand. The Cintiq 16 requires a VESA mounting plate included with the stand. The Cintiq 22 does not require the plate. On the exterior of the Cintiqs, you'll notice that there's a power button on the front of the Cintiq 16. That power button is located on the top edge of the Cintiq 22. You'll also notice that the bezel is a bit wider on the bottom of the Cintiq 16, but not quite as wide on the Cintiq 22. There's also a bit more of a buffer zone in between the bezel and the active drawing area on the Cintiq 22. This makes it more difficult for you to accidentally run your pen off of the active area and into the bezel. Now there are a couple of other differences such as the viewing angle which varies by a very small amount and the power consumption which is a little bit higher on the Cintiq 22. But other than that these tablets are nearly identical. So basically you just need to decide which size would be best for you. So which size should you choose? Well, only you know the answer to this question. If you're an artist, take a look at what you're using now. Do you draw in a sketchbook? If so, what's your most common paper size? Do you paint on canvas? If so, what size canvas? Do you draw on a tablet without a display? How large is that tablet's active area? If you draw with a mouse, how big is your mouse pad? Compare that to the size of the Cintiq 16 and 22 and take into consideration the size difference. This should give you an idea of how much gesture space you're used to. You'll also want to consider how much screen space you'll need. Depending on the software you use, the UI may take up more or less of your screen. In the case of art applications, your brush palettes will occupy more of the screen on a Cintiq 16 than it would on a Cintiq 22. I'd say in this case, bigger is better if your priorities are comfortable gesture space and adequate screen real estate. However, if you prefer a smaller tablet that is more portable, then the Cintiq 16 would certainly be an advantage. And now for the price. The Wacom Cintiq 22 is just $1 shy of $1,200. Now if you're thinking, whoa, that's way too much money, for $629 less, you could get a Cintiq 16, plus the optional stand if you don't need a large screen. But if you were thinking, hey, that's not very expensive, then you could add $700 for the Cintiq Pro 24, but you'd also need to add in the cost of a $500 stand on top of that if you wanted the next step up in size. I'd say based on tablet sizes that have been released in the past, such as the Cintiq 22 HD and the Cintiq 24 HD and the Cintiq 27 QHD, that it could be possible that there might be a Cintiq 24 released. This is all just speculation on my part, but for now, the Cintiq 22 is the largest entry-level display tablet that Wacom offers. I'd say overall, I'm happy with the design changes made for the Cintiq 22. Sure, I'll miss that nifty 3-in-1 cable, but the included stand more than makes up for that. If you're looking for a large display tablet that will give you all of the essential features that you'll need to create digital art and design on a computer, then the Cintiq 22 is what I would recommend. If you'd like a more in-depth look at the features of the Cintiq 22 and 16, or if you'd like to see how the Cintiq compares to similar display tablets, check out some of my helpful drawing tablet reviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.